Hi guys and welcome back to my channel and if you're new here my name is Hannah Renee and it is so nice to meet you. Today we're going to be talking about why we need the church and just the role of the church and all of that. I'm going to be talking about that today so without further ado let's just jump right on into this video. As I've grown up in church and just heard people talking about the church, there's this new belief that's going around where people are saying that they can be Christians, but they don't need to go to church to be a Christian. And I just wanted to talk about that. I also asked you guys on my Instagram if you wanted me to share this, and I did a little poll, and this one won versus the other topic. So I'm going to be talking about this today and just kind of addressing the belief that's going on and just my opinion on it. Obviously, this is my opinion. I'm going to be using the Bible, though, to have something back up my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. You can believe whatever you want, but I just want to share this and really just talk about why the church is so essential into being a Christian. So the passage that we're going to be reading is in the book of Acts, and I just finished taking a class at my Bible college called New Testament Survey, and we really dove into the book of Acts. So I have a lot of notes in here about the book of Acts. We're going to be reading this section in Acts 2 from verse 42 to 47, and Acts 2 is a very controversial chapter of the Bible just because of the first half of Acts 2. We're not going to be getting into that today. If you'd like me to get into that sometime, I can make a video on that, but we're just going to be talking about the second part of it. So if you want to grab your Bibles, it says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So if you don't know about where the church originated from, it originated in the book of Acts. And it was after Jesus had died and rose from the grave. And his disciples were like, what do we do now? And Jesus gave them the Great Commission, which is in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. It just says, go and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded and I'll be with them to the end of the age. So that's what that little passage says. And that's what Jesus told his disciples they were going to do now. That was their assignment. In the book of Acts, there's a man named Peter and he was one of the disciples and he was the one that helped start some of the early churches. So the first original church, it wasn't like established as a church, but it was just a group of people that loved Jesus and praised Jesus and they came together. And that was in the book of Acts. So that's what I just read to you is it was explaining what that group does and just what they're about. They weren't necessarily called Christians yet, but that's just the group that you know, hung out together and stuff. And really, the early church was very simple. We make it so complex now with all of our different activities and programs and technology and all of that. But it was so simple back in the day where they just did life together. It doesn't necessarily say that little phrase in the passage that I read, but that's essentially what they did. They broke bread together. They met in each other's houses or in the temple courts. They hung out together all the time. They praised Jesus together. They essentially just did everything together. That's really just the purpose of this Christian group. And we've made it into so much more than that, but that was the original design and the original purpose was for there to be a community of Christians, of like-minded people that were all doing life together and pursuing the same things. So when it comes to us in the 21st century and we have churches everywhere, there's so many churches, especially in the United States, 
and there's just so many options. When you are in a church, there's things that can happen that can be frustrating and the people that I talk to that don't really want to be a part of church anymore typically don't want to be a part of church anymore because they have conflict with other people or they have conflict with the leaders of the church or something like that and it's not necessarily about Jesus and that's the first reason that you really have to evaluate is if you're a Christian are you going to church for the community or are you going for Jesus or are you going for both because yes we want to go for Jesus we want to learn more about him and yes we want to go for community but we have to be going for both we can't just be going for one or the other where we're just going for community and just making friends and missing the Jesus part or we're just going for Jesus and missing the beauty of community and how he originally designed the church to be so you have to really evaluate your purpose for going to church in the first place the second thing that you really need to evaluate whether you're currently at a church or you're looking for a church is what is the mission and the goal of that church so there's some churches that are really about the show and the performance they obviously won't say that to you but you can just tell that there's no genuine pursuit of god make sure you're looking for a place that really is genuinely pursuing the Lord, but also creating opportunities for community, whether they have life groups or ministries you can serve in and just things like that, where you can find community is very important. Now, I've been talking about how to find a good church, but I'm going to be talking a little bit more just to the people that don't really like church and don't want to go to church because of conflict. The hard thing about that is, Anywhere that you go, there's going to be conflict because we're all humans and that's really unavoidable because you're going to have conflict at your job, at your school, and at church just because we're all humans. And one of the things that you have to learn how to do when there is conflict and something that I've had to learn while being in church is how to handle conflict and how to communicate your feelings well and clearly so that the conflict doesn't explode and just make everyone hate each other, but so the conflict can be dissolved and we actually can grow from that conflict. And what better place to learn how to deal with conflict than in the context of the church where we're learning how to have grace for people and compassion for people and learning how to see other people's point of view. I understand why people wouldn't want to come to church because of the conflict. But if you can't learn how to deal with conflict, to communicate your feelings, all of those things, then you're not gonna thrive in any job, in any school, in any environment that you go to because there's going to be conflict everywhere. Just everywhere, it's inevitable. So that's one of the really big reasons why I think that the church is so essential for Christians is because when you're doing Christianity alone, you're not learning how to deal with conflict in a safe environment. And you're not learning how to communicate your feelings in a place where people are going to show you love and compassion. At the same time, Christianity was meant to be done in community. That's the second reason that I have for you. Not only will it help you learn and grow, but it was what we were designed to do as Christians was to be in community, to do life together like i was talking about earlier is that's what the original design of christianity was doing life together in the context of a church is part of the package like it's part of what you sign up for not literally but figuratively when you accept jesus in your heart is to be a part of a church and i do understand if there isn't a church near you that is a different situation and if that is the case then i encourage you to pray and seek out a group of people that are Christians and their community that you can be a part of because that is going to be super essential for you. And that's my third reason of why we need the church is because doing Christianity by yourself is hard to do. It's almost impossible. Like it is possible, but at the same time, it's super duper hard to do. And we need people to encourage us. We need people to be there for us. We need that support system. So that's why the church is so important is because you need those people. 
We need that in any aspect of life. You need that support system, the people that you can lean back on, and to ask those honest questions. And that's why Jesus created the church thousands and thousands of years ago. It's because he knew that we needed each other in order to follow him. So that's just what I wanted to share with you today. I'm not this biblical scholar, like I don't know a lot, but I just wanted to share that with you. It was just something that was on my heart and you guys said you wanted to hear it. So that's why I'm making this video. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below because I'd love to have a conversation. If you just are wondering about anything that I said, that is the end of this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and let me know of any other video ideas you'd like to see from me because I'd love to do this for you. So that's it. I'll see you guys next Saturday. Bye, guys.